Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to try to find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence. Well, what are those? Well, let's do what we did in the previous video. We're going to find the values for x so that the series will converge, and in doing so, we'll find both the radius and the interval of convergence. Again, here we have the nth term of this infinite series, so let's find the ratio of the n plus 1 divided by the n term. So the ratio is equal to a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. So simply the ratio of two consecutive terms in the series. The top, the numerator, we'll find by adding a 1 to every one of the n's. So this becomes n plus 1 times x plus 2 to the n plus 1 divided by 3 to the n plus 2 power. Let me put the equal sign over here. And so we divide the whole thing by the previous term, which is n times x plus 2 to the n power divided by 3 to the n plus 1. So this now can be simplified as follows. We have n plus 1 divided by n times x plus 2 to the n plus 1 divided by x plus 2 to the n. Simply subtract exponents, we get x plus 2 in the numerator divided by, here again we subtract exponents, n plus 2 minus n plus 1 is simply 1, 3 to the n, 3 to the 1 power. Now what we can do here is divide n into the numerator, so this can be written as 1 plus 1 over n times x plus 2 divided by 3. And now we can go ahead and take the limit as n goes to infinity. So the limit as n approaches infinity of the ratio is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of that quantity 1 plus 1 over n times x plus 2 divided by 3. Now when n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0, and we simply get 1 times this fraction, so this becomes equal to the absolute value of x plus 2 divided by 3. Now we know that for this series to converge, this ratio must be less than 1. So in order to converge, we want this quantity here, the value of x plus 2 divided by 3, we want that to be less than 1. And now multiply both sides by 3, we get the following, we get the absolute value of x plus 2 must be less than 3. Now the number 3 here, that is what we call the radius of convergence. And in just a moment, we'll see what that actually means. Now we're going to solve for all the possible values that x can be in such a way that the infinite series still converges. The requirement then can be found by solving this for x. And we can solve for x by saying that negative 3 must be less than x plus 2, which must be less than a positive 3. Now when we subtract a 2 from the left side, the middle and the right side, we get the following. Minus 5 is less than x, which is less than 1. This here is the interval of convergence. And let's me, let me graph it out. So we have the left value of minus 5, the positive value of 1. And let's say we're on the number line. This is negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and positive 1. If I draw a little circle around here and a little circle around there, that means any number between a positive 1 and negative 5 for the value of x allows this infinite series to converge. Notice that the total distance from 1 to negative 5 numerically is 6. The middle value is negative 2, and the distance from the middle value to the edge of that range, from negative 2 to 1, or from negative 2 to 5, or negative 5 I should say, that is 3 units in either direction. Notice the 3 here was the radius of convergence. The radius of convergence means it's the distance from the middle value of the interval to either edge of that interval. So the radius is this distance, and this is what we call the interval of convergence. And that's how it's done.